Right guys, so we've cleared the board off, obviously. I mean, you know, yeah. we, we, we don't want to be gluing stuff to the board <laughs> like, like terrain pieces. So we've just got mountains of bits of terrain everywhere around here. Um, so the first thing to do, I imagine, is spread the glue. the glue. So Ryan got hold of some contractor's PVA glue. On the cheap. <laughs> Big five litre Duh. tub of it. Five litres this costs, costs almost uh, yeah. less than 500 <laughs> millilitres from Hobbycraft. Um, we don't have too many craft shops here in the UK no. that are reasonable and Hobbycraft certainly uh, isn't one of them. <laughs> this is just straight off Amazon Prime. <laughs> Although to be honest, I th we I found quite a lot of the um, a lot of the craft stuff that I've wanted from Pound Shop. After watching Luke's APS Affordable Paint Service, really great guy, you know, check him out. Um, he gets a lot of his stuff from Pound Shop, and it's brilliant. You can't go wrong. No, one pound tub of of already made up um, polyfiller. Yeah. You know, it's just all sorts of bits and pieces from Pound Shop over here, so well worth it. So we're going to spread a load of this out onto the table. And then what was this stuff that you got? Ballast, I think, from a model shop. Usually used for what goes underneath um, rails, if you're doing model railways. But it is proper fine. Really, really fine. Seasick. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it is really, really fine stuff, so it should give a really nice, even spread to the table. Um, I've got the webcam running. You'll see us speeding through clips of that later on as it goes up. Bit of music in background, then we'll cut to the uh, the talking bits now and then to just explain what we're doing. Yeah. Basically, um, this part of the uh, the board stage you'll have seen on other videos. It's nothing, nothing spreading glue. Big or new, um, but we're hoping that this contractor's PVA will probably harden off quicker than than regular school PVA glue if you like Hopefully. stuck the heater on last night we got terrible heating in this house it's all storage heaters so I had to put that on overnight spritz, spritz spritz and uh, yeah good to go right we'll catch you in the next little clip So Ryan's just going around the board edges with a bottle of PVA glue. Which you can refill with the super cheap PVA once it's empty. So you're best just getting as cheap as you can with one of these. There's a tip. So it's just handy to, to um, apply on detail and bases as well because then you can just squeeze it on quite easily rather than trying to handle a five <laughs> kilogram bottle of it. I mean, trying to do detail with that is not. No, no. Advisable. I mean, to be honest, it's not the worst thing if I get a bit of PVA glue on my knackered carpet. However, the the lady set over my left shoulder is is glaring at me. So clearly, gluing the carpet is not a um a thing that we want to be doing. Although so far you can see we haven't managed to actually do any overspill. And if we get any gravel on the carpet, that easily hoovers up, so that's not a, a big problem. Um, I don't know if that's going to pick up the rain outside, but it's currently absolutely pissing down. So we don't really want to be out there with this. Uh, if you do have a nice day and outside and whatever, it, it's definitely great to do all this sort of stuff outside. But Except if there's strong winds, because you might end up with a load of... Well, essentially crap stuck in your bar. Yeah, flies around here. Yeah. I mean, I basically live like backing on to, to miles and miles of field. 
mean, if you don't mind corpses glued into your board, that's fine. It'd be like um... <laughs> monster bugs. <laughs> oh, what what are those Nurgle? Is it blight drones? Yeah, blight drones dead all over your board. But yeah, I mean, we've got the area in here to be doing this, so that's um, perfectly fine. That's a very nice little squiggle line going on there as well. So we ran out of um, what we got of the gravel, so what I've actually got down here is a bag of pre-mixed cement. So using sifting we've been able to get some more smaller gravel pieces and sand. Uh, I mean obviously we'll be dry brushing the board anyway, so it won't particularly matter and it'll add some more texture to it as well. The only downside with a pre-mix like that is it'll take slightly longer to dry on the edges because the uh, the sand will obviously absorb the glue. Um, but it'll still work and it'll give a bit of a different texture edge around the side. So if you're looking back over the video that's on the computer and wondering what we were just doing then, that'll be what it is. Although, at the speed that that clip will be running at, <laughs> you do really well to pick it out anyway. Uh, but I thought we'd mention it. So, if you're going to do this, that was four bags that Three you bags. bought? Three, Three bags. bags. Three so bags. Four bags of ballast. Oh, I think it was. Gage. I think it was. What size were the bags? A uh, kilogram each. Right. So that was three kilograms on the board. Four would have done the job. Um, but, as you'll see by the time this board is done, I'll link what the actual uh, stuff we use was. Oh, yeah, great idea. Pop that down in the description below. But that's really nice stuff, and it is really fine. And then we're just texturing out the edges. Once it's dry, we can then just spread any loose bits and then obviously re glue yeah. with the spray. Absolutely. So, this is the sort of messier part of the, uh, of the job. But it's also what makes your board stand out. So at this stage you could be building up little outcroppings, little nobbles, little hills. You could be doing whatever you want really. Um, we're just trying to do a Flat textured end. urban battlefield for all the terrain that we've got and that fits really well. But at this stage I've seen people build hills into the table. Uh, again, another bit of a plug but Luke's APS shows some building of boards where he actually puts the hills in and then textures them into the board, etc. This would be the stage right here where you would do all that sort of thing. Um, but for what we're wanting this to look like, this is perfect for us. Okay guys, see you in the next clip. So, what you probably just saw us doing then was Ryan touching up around the outside of the board. We're going to get some more gravel to, um, to tidy the outside of the board up. Uh, what I was doing with the hairdryer, instead of us getting the board and checking the crap out of it, uh, I was using the air from the hairdryer, starting up at a higher angle and coming down. Uh, this basically allowed me to spread out a lot of this and get a more even cut, especially down here 
much more even than it was. So it allowed us to spread the top bits that obviously hadn't <coughs> settled in the glue. Um, might do a little bit more over here, but in fairness, this all just adds textures to the board, which is the name of the game. Uh, so Ryan's going to mix up some PVA wash. Basically, you water down PVA glue, make it into like a, a milky consistency, and then we will spray up the top, so it's like misting all the way over the top, which will seal in that top bit as well. Okay, we'll see you in the next clip. So what Ryan's doing now is he's knocked up a bottle of um, PVA glue and water mixed. Uh, you probably can't see it. Ah, there we go. So it's moving around like milk. So the idea is you want as much PVA glue in your bottle as possible, but so that it still sprays out in a mist. Not like what I did last month while building the turd terrain up top there, and put too much PVA in so it came out more as a single spray. That's no good. So Ryan's got the right ratio and you can see that misting out nicely over the top of the board. And now what that does is acts as a sealant. It's so like we discussed earlier, your PVA glue on the bottom holds the uh, whatever material you wish to use in place. And then this misting technique over the top seals the top. So you've got a seal on the bottom and you've got a seal on the top. So as you're putting your terrain on, moving your models around etc, bits of this are not flaking off. Uh, you're not scratching the paintwork on your models. In my case, that wouldn't be a bad thing. But if it's nicely painted models, you don't want any damage to them. And also, by doing the misting technique as well, it's applying just what it needs to the board. You're not saturating the board, um, you know, and making it, it damp as hell, because that then will increase the drying time that the board will need. So he's working his way around, making sure he gets all of the areas. He did a pre-soak of the um, the concrete mix, basically to start to get the concrete mix to activate. Uh, it needs water to harden up, so he pre-soaked it before doing the spritzing job that he's doing now, which enabled that to get on. I mean, to be honest, this would have activated it as well, but in the time that it took. Um, between that and getting the PVA glue going it's already started to harden up. Um, this is really quick drying cement as well. So just going around the board making sure he gets all the important areas. You can't really see the PVA sitting on top of the pebbles um, all you do see is it just slightly wet. I mean I can see it this isn't picking it up quite as, as well there we go, that probably picks it up a little bit better. But nice, even coverage all the way around. And that's perfect, just what you need. Okay guys, so that's the board done. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more sand for the edges. Uh, not sand, sorry, gravel for the edges, but we can tidy that up at a later stage. Uh, so now basically what you want to do is allow your board decent drying time. I suggest with a board this size, 24 hours, uh, easily, you'll know when it's done. You'll, you'll be able to touch it, there'll be no tackiness left to the board, uh, and you, you'll, you'll know when it's, uh, it's right. If you're in a better heated house than this one, that would speed the time up greatly. Um, this is probably going to be a, a, a 24 to 48 hour drying job. We'll see how it goes. Uh, in the next video that we'll do after this, we'll show you um, texturing the board, as in painting, dry brushing techniques. I mean, to be honest, if you're watching this video now, chances are that you have done uh, dry brushing before on models. 
It's very, very simple, uh, but we'll show you what we're doing with the board, how we're going to paint it up. Uh, and then we'll do a, an after shot as well with the terrain back on the board uh, so you can see the finished product. Uh, thanks for watching guys, I hope you found this video interesting. Um, you know, I'm sure there's people out there, uh, those of you that have already got gaming tables, uh, but this is really, you know, focused on, on people that haven't um, got their own board and were wondering perhaps how, how to build one and, and texture one up. Um, to get a nice looking gaming table at home. Uh, as I say, thanks for watching and uh, happy gaming.